Welcome to the Word of God. I believe that the Holy Spirit will speak to you, teach you in this teaching. The Bible talk about I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So I believe you will hide the word of God in your heart and you will do the will of God. Thank you so much. God bless you. I think that this sermon is one of the most important sermons in my life. And I have been living according to this teaching all these 40 years. I rarely talk about it on Sunday because I'm afraid that people will run away because the message is strong. A lot of times people like to hear the message, God bless me. God deliver me from the dead. Heal me. But you rarely hear this kind of message. So please put the seatbelt on. Don't run away. So quiet here. <laughs> it means you're thinking about running away. <laughs> Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to read your word, to understand your way, your will, Lord. We pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will speak to us, Lord, and we can live a life that is pleasing to you. One day I pray, Lord, the majority, maybe 99.9%, of the members of New Hope International Church and the churches that we have been taking care of, we stand before the throne of Jesus. And Jesus say, good and faithful servant, come into heaven and rejoice with me. And the angels, we celebrate the returning home of your people, Lord. We thank you, Father, for talking to us in this sermon, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. A few Sundays ago, I was talking about two things. Number one, Jesus is our king. Do you treat Jesus as your king or not? I wonder. Two, we learn that the kingdom of God is in us. It's not about the piece of land. And we learn from the Word of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Last time, we learned about expanding the kingdom of God. And the first thing we need to do is to expand the kingdom on the inside of us. The kingdom of God for those who are born again, believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and repent of their sin, have the kingdom of God on the inside. But we want to seek the kingdom, expand the kingdom. What does it mean, expand the kingdom? It means that whatever of the kingdom of heaven will increase in our life more and more. More righteousness, more holiness, more the fruit of the Holy Spirit, more of the mind of Christ, more power, more anointing, more wisdom, more grace, more favor. Keep expanding and expanding. How many people like to have more money in your bank account? Raise your hand up. Oh, I don't need to perform brain surgery here, brain transplant. Everyone want to expand your bank account. You want to have more money in your bank the same thing spiritually, we want to have more of the kingdom. This year, I'll have more faith and love and righteousness than last year. I keep growing on the inside of me. And as we keep growing, the things of heaven on the inside, heaven is with us. And at the same time, all the good things in heaven will expand inside us. How many people want to live a long life and be in good health? There is no sickness in heaven. So when you expand the kingdom of God inside you, the sickness have to leave. When you expand the kingdom of God inside you, you have more wisdom. When something happens, the wisdom, boom, you can resolve the problem. The word of wisdom come. And the enemy will be defeated. You have more victory because in heaven, there is no defeat. There is no poverty. There is no sickness. There is no curse. So your life full of blessing, full of the good things from heaven. You like your body here full of heaven? Amen. 
or you want to be full of hell? No. I hope not. I want my life, my body to be full of heaven. Therefore, I need to do my part to keep expanding the kingdom in my life. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 to 11, I review a little bit. So, dear brothers, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. And then you will never stumble or fall away. Is it possible that a Christian fall away? Yes. Or stumble. And God will open wide the gates of heaven for you to enter into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We work hard to expand the kingdom. We cannot be lazy. We go to church, we go to care group, we read the Bible, we listen to good sermon, we serve, we get involved, we try to expand the kingdom. And God said, when we work hard like that, the gates of heaven open up. Not only that one day after we die, we will enter into heaven, but not only that, when the gate open, what happens when you open a purse of our lady and flip like this? Some credit card and cash going to come out from that purse. Is that right? When God opens heaven, He will pour into you more and more of the things of God. I live this way. Sometime, actually a few days ago, I was lying on my bed, getting ready to sleep. Suddenly, the presence of God came on me. Whoo! And I said, God, why do this here? I'm going to go to sleep. Uh, you can do it at church, but not here. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> and God said, I open heaven and pour something good in your life right now. I don't know what it is, but I know the presence of God touched me on the bed when my head is on the pillow. Why? Because I I keep expanding the kingdom of God. We expand the kingdom of God in our life by receiving the word, being prayed for, filled with the Holy Spirit, learn the word of God, practice the word of God, getting involved, serving the Lord, and touched by the fire of God more and more. Because let me read to you. Matthew 12, 28. For if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. The world has two kingdoms, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. A lot of us grow up in a non-Christian home, surrounding by idols and false religions. So demons are in us from when we were young. And not only that, sometimes we watch bad movie, watch something or get involved in gossiping or in some sin in life. So the kingdom of darkness come in, demon come in and stay inside us. And that is not of the kingdom, that is of hell. So God say, by my spirit, I clean you up. I kick demon out of you. I take the curse out of you. I take what belongs to the darkness out of you by cleaning. The Bible says, God sanctify. Sanctify means clean up. No, the word justify means to make you holy, to make you righteous by the death of Jesus Christ. But sanctification means He takes action of cleaning you up to become more holy and pure. The Holy Spirit sanctify you. Get rid of the junk wrong idea, wrong mentality, the strongholds and curses and sickness and demon out of you. And when God does that, surely the kingdom of God has come on you. Which means that the kingdom of God expand more and less of the kingdom of darkness. If you are a container, you don't want to keep junk on the inside. That's why the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 3, when Jesus talked about the baptism with fire. I don't have that scripture on the screen, but I can read for you. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful. This is John the Baptist talking. Than I whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, not ore, 
and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So God said, the Holy Spirit, the fire of God, burn the junk out of us. Get rid of the thing of hell, of the world, and put in the things of heaven. So the kingdom of God will expand inside us. This is why I believe that the church need to welcome the fire of God. God's people need to be touched by the fire of God. I was touched by the fire of God first time in my life around 1996. And I keep being touched by the fire. And God cleansed me, changed me, expanded the kingdom inside me and get rid of the kingdom of darkness, the chaff, the draws, the impurities, the bad stuff out of me, little by little. And the kingdom of God keep expanding in my life. How many people want heaven to be in your life? How many people want to be a carrier of heaven? You do your part, work hard, get the word in, get the Holy Spirit fill you up. But today, that is introduction. Today, I want to talk about the second part. You expand the kingdom of God on earth, outside you, in your home, in your community, at your workplace, at your classroom, at your school. Everywhere you go, you expand the kingdom of God outside you. Seek the kingdom of God first, expand the kingdom inside. Seek the kingdom of God, expand the kingdom of God outside us. Matthew 28, 9, 18 to 20 say, Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go outside now, not inside. Go. Tomorrow I'm going to England to spread the fire of God and the word of God in England and Switzerland. And therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them. That's why we produce so many teachings in the YouTube. To teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Every born again Christian should have this mindset should live this way. If you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, you say, I want to be involved in expanding the kingdom of God on this planet Earth in my generation. I'm not going to be lazy Christian, living for myself. Me, 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 me. No, you're going to be involved in the great commission. Get involved in helping the nations to come to know Jesus to be born again and enter into the kingdom of God. Every Christian should live that way. You should be involved in the great commission by using your time, your energy, your money, your giftings, your talents, anything in your life you say, I want to expand the kingdom of God on earth here. When you read the scripture in the book of Acts, you can see that the early church disciples were living that way according to the command of Jesus in Matthew chapter 28. Let me read example here. Quickly, Acts 8, 12. Talk about the New Testament church in the book of Acts. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God. Wow, the word kingdom a lot in the Bible. We talk about the kingdom less in the church. We should talk more. The good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. We preach Jesus and we preach the kingdom. They were baptized both men and women. You can see here that the early church preached the kingdom and many people got saved. I'm going to baptize people in Europe this time. Many people accepted Christ lately in Switzerland. Acts chapter 28, verse 23. So when they had appointed him, mean Paul, a day, many came to Paul at his lodging to whom he... uh, play computer game with them. He watched some drama, Korean drama with them. To whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets 
from morning till evening. Wow, that church service is so long in the house. Our church service is two hours and people complain already too long. They have church service from morning to evening, talking about the kingdom of God. Yeah. Paul preached the kingdom, saved soul. Acts 28, 31, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. You notice two words here, kingdom of God and the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. The early church disciple preached the kingdom. Tell the world, touch people outside the church to get them saved, to get them born again. James chapter 2, verse 5, Listen, my dear brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who loved him? You can see here that we preach the gospel not only to the rich, not only to the same nationality, but we preach the gospel to all kinds of people, to the poor, to regular people, to the farmers, to all kinds of people. We are not just picking a group of people. That's why our church become international church. We produce teaching in Mandarin, in French, in Vietnamese, in English, in uh, also Cambodian. We have a... Uh, YouTube channel in Cambodian. The pastor in Cambodia translate our lesson and put the word on my mouth in the movie. So when you turn on, you don't hear my word. You don't hear my voice. It's all him talking in Cambodian language. And hundreds of people come and listen. Thousands of people in Cambodia come and listen to the gospel. We want to preach the gospel to the nations. Amen. We want to save souls. We want to bring people into salvation. And we need to get involved with that. I want to encourage you, every member of this church, everyone who is listening in the live stream right now, you say to God, God, use me to expand your kingdom in this generation to the nations. I will get involved. Your love offering, your time, your energy, your gift, your home. Every home I and Pastor Da bought, we were thinking, can we use this home for the kingdom? Anything we do, when we bought a car, we think, can we use this for the kingdom? I become a neurosurgeon, practice in the clinic. I'm going to expand the kingdom of God there. I'm going to pray for my patients. I'm going to tell them about Jesus Christ. We, everywhere we go, we use our education, our talents, our time, our energy for the kingdom of God. We have kingdom mindset. We have only one life to live. We don't want just to live for the nice refrigerator, nice car, nice house, and one day we die anyway and nothing happened because we just focus on ourselves. We want to be involved in expanding the kingdom of God. I tell you the truth. Mentally right now, emotionally, I don't want to be on the airplane tomorrow at all. I struggle. I don't like to get on the airplane and have jet lag and travel tired, sit in the car from London to another city for two hours. I think the city named Grantham. I have to sit in the car, in the van, to get to another city for two hours, come back again two hours. It's not fun. But God for the kingdom. I want to see revival in England. We're going to do our part. Amen. We're willing to sacrifice for the kingdom. Now, in the personal level, when we want to evangelize, we want to tell people about Jesus. Definitely, we need to pull up our sleeve and do something. When I first passed that, I moved to Seattle area. At that time, we could not speak English very well. Uh, very broken English, and it's still broken today. And <laughs> yesterday I was corrected. I said it wrong on Friday. I read the I read the uh, scripture. Uh, the scripture I say weary. I say no, not weary, weary. Okay, okay, weary. Okay, why b e a r bear? But w e a r weary. 
English language, please help me. Ah, oh, I don't understand. <laughs> Why O U U, but H O U S T O N, not Houston, Houston. Not fair. English language. Ah, oh, please have mercy on me. So we need at that time when we move here. We reach out to Thai students because we speak Thai. We set up dinner, party, birthday party. They came to the party, came to the dinner. We went to visit these all these Thai students, and we give them food. We feed them, and at the end, after they eat, ah, uh, can I share something? And they sit there. What are you going to share? This doctor. I share my testimony and I share the gospel, and many of them got saved. And one of them is Sister Thai, who is working in this office for all these years. She was a Thai student who got saved the first year I came here. We went to even Thai party, you know, the New Year Thai party that just dance and drink alcohol. I, I walk into that party. They drink. This is happened in uh, among Buddhist people. They drink alcohol. We pass it down. I walk in, and God tell me. Walk to the dancing floor. What? I'm not a dancer, so I walk in the dancing floor with Pastor Da, and suddenly saw Pastor Brenda and Tom dancing at that time. <laughs> He was maybe drunk at that time. <laughs> He was a non-believer, so I smile at them. I greet them. And after that, I get a phone number. I drove from Bellevue to Auburn every week and told Tom about the gospel. I think about maybe a couple months, and then he got saved. Yeah. The first encounter is on the dancing floor to tell him the gospel. I say, yeah, chapter six, verses nine to ten, and he said, go. Go, drive to Auburn, fly to England, go to Tacoma, go and tell these people. Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing and do not perceive. Make the heart these people of these people dull. So God said that most people in the world have a dull heart; they don't want to hear the gospel or about Jesus Christ. And their ears heavy and shut their eyes. A lot of people in America hate the church. They don't want to hear anything about church. They don't want to go to church. They don't like Christianity. Lest they see now the antidote. Lest they see with their eyes what they see. They see that you are kind. They see that you smile. Hi. They see that you are humble. You're so. Nice to people. When the X-ray technician um, pushed the X-ray machine into my operating room and took X-ray, I say, "Thank you so much, Mr. So and So." I bow down and say, "Thank you." And he was shocked because I'm a neurosurgeon. Why he bow down and said, "Thank you," because I want to, him to see my humility, my kindness to say thank you when they see with their eyes. The first thing in evangelism, in reaching out to people, is they need to see your kindness, sincerity, integrity, your generosity, your joy, your peace on your face, and your loving action toward them. When they see what happened next, let them see with their eyes, and then they open their ears and hear with their ears. They hear what? Your testimony and the good news. That's why I don't want this church to be religious. That people are so religious and so condemning. And you don't know the Bible. You go to hell. No, don't do that. Show your goodness to people because the goodness of the Lord will lead them to repentance. You don't condemn people and judge people. Amen. Don't judge anybody. Just love people. Hear with their ears, and when they hear what happened, faith comes by hearing, and hearing of the word of God, and understand with their heart. 
their faith start to rise up and return and be healed. In expanding the kingdom of God, first of all, you need to expand the kingdom inside you. That you have more joy. Everywhere you go, you smile. You're loving. You're kind. You're generous. You're so like Jesus Christ. When people look at you, you don't have to open your mouth first. You're just kind, generous to people. Be genuine, sincere, loving, righteous. People look at you. Wow, he is so different. Can you tell me what's going on with your life? And then you can open your mouth and tell your testimony. And you can share the gospel. And their heart open, their ears open, and they will receive the message. This is why, if you notice in this church, I try very hard to preach to make you grow up and change your life. Because you are the witness for Jesus. If you are immature, baby. I remember when I first moved to America, one of my co-workers, he claimed to be a Christian, but he's so mean in the hospital to the nurse and the patient. I feel like, oh, wow. How can people believe in Jesus? This doctor is so mean, so prideful. That's why we need to grow up inside to have more of the kingdom on the inside of us first. And definitely, when we want to live for the kingdom, to expand the kingdom outside, we need to sacrifice something. We need to deny something. In Luke chapter 18, 29 to 30, So he said to them, Actually, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in this age to come eternal life. This scripture doesn't mean you have to walk away from your wife. It doesn't mean you don't associate with your or love your parents. No, it doesn't mean that way. You still love them. You love your wife. You love your husband. You love your kids. You visit your parents. You buy gifts and give to your parents. You love them. But it means that you put the kingdom of God before them. And when you put the kingdom of God first before them, God will bless you. You're going to have, the Bible say, you many times more in this present time, God going to bless you. And in the age to come, eternal life. To expand the kingdom of God requires some sacrifice. Decision making. I choose God first. But I still love my parents. I still love my Wife, love my kids. It doesn't mean you love less. You love them even more. But you still seek the kingdom of God first. Are you getting this? Okay. Now, it's not easy to try to expand the kingdom of God outside you by yourself. You need the family. You need the army. You need to work together as a team. For example, I may be able to share the gospel, but I don't know how to cook. Therefore, I need somebody who cooks very well to work with me. You expand the kingdom of God by cooking good food. Feed people, another person, share the gospel. You work as a team. You need to be in the church to expand the kingdom of God. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principality and powers in the heavenly places. Jesus said, I want to show my kingdom through the church, which means we work together as a team. We value each other. We help each other. I cannot preach the gospel well to the Chinese community because I cannot speak Mandarin. I need Mandarin speaking, brother and sister, to expand the kingdom of God among the Mandarin speaking community. I could not speak Vietnamese. I can say only Ankerm, Dive Chia. I can say only a few words. So I need the Vietnamese community to expand the kingdom of God among their language people. You see what I mean? That's why we need to join together in a church and work together to preach the gospel to the nations. 
There is no one man show. We work together. We help each other. Each and every one of us has different backgrounds and gifts and talents, and we come together and support each other for what? Not just to have a social club here. Have nice snack on Sunday. The snack is to expand the kingdom. It's not for the stomach. You need to know that. Okay, a lot of you snack. Ooh, no, for expand the kingdom. Amen. <laughs> we do everything to expand the kingdom of God. Amen. We help each other because that is why we live on this earth. We do everything to expand the kingdom. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 10 to 15. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens. Talk about Jesus Christ. In order to fill the whole universe. It was he, Jesus, who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. To prepare God's people. It's the job of pastor to prepare God's people for works of service. What is the work of service? Expand the kingdom. Build the church. Make disciples. So that the body of Christ may be built up. People get saved, get trained, get disciples, join the church. The church grow, build up. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the wave and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head of the church. That is Christ. So basically, we cannot expand the kingdom of God by ourselves. We need to be in a church, good church so that the pastor, prophet, evangelist can help you to grow up to become more like Jesus. And not only that, you can get involved in evangelism and in reaching out to the lost soul. If I can say simple this way, we expand the kingdom of God by number one, evangelism. I'm talking about outside you. Evangelism, sharing the gospel, telling people the testimony what God has done for you. Preaching the gospel and tell the lost soul about the love of Jesus Christ. Number two, you help the new believer to become strong disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. The first process called evangelism. The second process called discipleship. Let's look at the picture on the screen. Ankle scale. Let me explain to you. I live this way. This is the way I live. Oh God, on that side, not that side. I live that way. Enkel is a theologian who put this scale for us to understand how we should expand the kingdom. You can see minus awareness of supreme being, no knowledge of gospel, which means that like me, I grew up in a Buddhist home. And I did not believe in God. And one day, I saw the anatomy of a human being in the anatomy class. And I began to think, wow, this brain cannot happen by accident. There must be some supreme being make this brain. I was thinking, but I did not know the gospel when I was young. And then... Somebody shared the gospel. My neighbor came to me and told me about the gospel and Jesus Christ. I was minus seven when I was a young boy. Minus six, awareness of fundamental of gospel. Minus five, grabs the implication. At that time, I was maybe about 28 years old. I went to watch Jesus movie. I know about Catholic church, I went to Catholic school. I heard about Jesus. I heard about God, but I have no idea about the gospel. On that day when I watched the movie Jesus that he died on the cross, he paid a price for me. I turned into minus five. I began to understand 
the implication of gospel. Minus four, positive attitude. What happened in that Bible study group when I was a young doctor? Every couple, they love each other so much. They're so generous. They're so kind to each other. And to me, I and Pastor Da were not born again yet. When we look at them, we have a very positive attitude toward Christianity. I was minus four. Then minus three. One night, I began to realize that I had a lot of problems. I was selfish. I was not happy. I was depressed. I'm not a happy man. I began to realize I have problems. M- minus two, decision to do something about that. Minus one, repentance and faith in Christ. I bow down and say, Jesus, I need you to forgive my sin. I want to become a Christian. I come to minus one. And then after that, I never forgot. I went to the operating room as a neurosurgery resident. I was in the operating room and I was t- start to think, am I crazy? I thought I came from monkey. But now I believe in the creator. I believe in God. Maybe I'm crazy. And suddenly God talked to me. I died for you. I was resurrected. I am God. Then I get rid of that evolution hypothesis. I say, yes, I came from God. I have evaluation post-decision, plus one. Then plus two, start to join the local church. Plus three, start to grow up in behavior and mentality. Plus four, communion with God, learn how to pray how to walk with God, read the Bible. Plus five, start to serve God, become steward of God, get involved in serving. So you can see the progression from minus to zero to plus. Show the next picture. Today, like a classroom. Next picture. Okay. Wow, you cannot feel the whole, oh, on this side too. Cannot feel the whole thing. Okay, you can see that in this process of expanding the kingdom of God, there is God's role. God's role at the beginning at minus eight is that His general revelation in His creation. People see the beautiful tree. And that's, oh, that one's better. Okay. (laughs) Kulim make this one. Thank you so much, Kulim. Much easier. Okay. So God's role, His general revelation. Revelation, when you see beautiful mountain, you notice something here is not happening by accident. There is a creator. At that one, minus eight. Then God began to convict the heart of non-believers. That's why when you witness, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God inside you, when you share, the, will convict the non-believers. You cannot depend on your own ability. For yourself, you proclaim the good news. And when you proclaim the good news, they began to hear the good news and they opened more. If you understand this scale, you will not get discouraged when people say no to you. When you talk to your kids, you talk to them and they say, "Ah, no, I don't want uh, anything Christianity. Don't get discouraged. They are still minus seven. Keep showing love. Keep talking. You're going to move them from minus seven, minus six, little by little. And eventually, when they come to minus two, you invite them to accept Jesus Christ at the right timing. You see? It's a process of expanding the kingdom of God. It's not a one-time thing. It takes some time to get people to know the gospel. This process will be quicker if Miracles happen. For example, why we need signs and wonders. Somebody minus seven, but suddenly he got a cancer. He rejected Christianity all along for years. Suddenly he got a cancer, you lay hand, the cancer disappear. He jumped from minus seven down to minus one in one day because he know now God is big. We need miracles. Amen? So, 
God wants everyone to be born again. Eventually, after repent and accept Jesus Christ, they become new believers. Next picture. I try to show you how it works. After that, after they become new believers, God began to work in their life to cleanse their life. If you want this scale, I can email you. You don't need to take picture. I can email you. After that, so the first minus eight to zero, we call evangelism. But don't stop there. Sometimes church stop at only evangelism. When people get saved, done. Hey, you get saved now, you come to church, hallelujah, and done. No, it's not stopping. It had to go on to this one, discipleship. God began to do his part to teach, to convict, to cleanse, to sanctify. Our job as a Christian is to follow up, teach them, make disciples. That's why on Tuesday night, I have a big group of disciples here every Tuesday night. That's why we have care group. You go to care group so that you can be discipled. You have the young adult care group because I want to disciple young adult to grow up to become strong Christians. We have care group, we have small group, we have Bible study, we have church to disciple you. In those process, they start to commit, start to grow, find their gifts, become more like Jesus Christ, keep being cleansed, growing, growing, growing from glory to glory to glory, and they become more effective servant of God, and eventually they become like Jesus Christ. It's a process. This is the process of expanding the kingdom of God. Amen? You see the whole picture? Wow, it's fun. Now, I would like to beg all of you, please, don't be lukewarm Christians. Don't be pew warmer Christians. Get involved in both areas, evangelism and discipleship. You may say, Pastor Lau, I'm not a pastor. I cannot teach people like you. I cannot make disciples like you. You don't need to do like me. You, do, you use your gift. You just show up. For example, you show up, smile. The new believer who came to that group, look at your smile. Wow, they love me. Ah, oh, I have the encouragement and energy to come back. On Sunday, instead of, boop, get out of the door to the car and run away. No, stay around. Greet new believers. Help people to grow up. Encourage them. That's why we have snack. The snack is not about food. Snack is a time to disciple, to encourage one another, pray for one another. You use your gift, cooking, cleaning, computer, whatever. You get involved in expanding the kingdom of God to the non-believers and to the believers. Pastor Da may not be preaching like me, but I tell you, she worked behind the scenes so much. Last night, we spent time packing to go to Europe to make disciples in Europe. We went to bed at, I think, 2 a.m. Because we need to prepare to travel. That is work. That is work to expand the kingdom. But in our heart, it's not about traveling. It's about kingdom, 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 kingdom. Expand the kingdom. Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. We run the race. We don't want to live for ourselves. We want to expand the kingdom of God. Why? I, I'm almost 70 years old. Why, why I still go to a young adult care group? Because I'm young, still young. But the second reason, expand the kingdom. Why I go to Friday night care group? Expand the kingdom. Why we open our home, clean up, cook, feed people, expand the kingdom. Why I work so hard and make money when I was a neurosurgeon and try to not spend in an unnecessary thing. Because I want to use my money to expand the kingdom. Everything is about the kingdom. Christians, 
members of this church, wake up. Oh, now I'm on fire. It's not about you. It's not about this church. It's about Jesus. It's about taking people to the heaven. It's about expanding the kingdom of God. Get excited. Amen. Everything you do, every decision you make, for the kingdom. Oh, no, this is nasty. For the kingdom. <laughs> I'm trying to choke a little bit. <laughs> Amen. I need to preach this sermon maybe once a year yes. to remind people. Every quarter. Every quarter. Oh. <laughs> Today we do eat steak, yes. but we need it. Okay. I look at Lauren. We're going to start the care group at UW, University of Washington, soon. Right. We are applying right now. But you know why? I want to see the kingdom of God go to the young people at UW. I want them to know God. And it's good to minister to young people because they still have a long way to go to build the kingdom. I got saved when I was in college. And I'm here today because I was trained when I was a young man by American missionary who taught me about the kingdom of God. Christian in America, wake up. Yes. Kingdom. It's not about yourself. Right. Amen. Amen. Live for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Kids, if you live for the kingdom, God will provide all of your needs. Amen. He will take care of you. Amen. 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 Mm. <laughs> How many people say, I will live for the kingdom? I will expand the kingdom. Inside me. Outside me. I will use my gift, my talents, my time, my energy, my wisdom, everything that I have to expand the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for reminding this church the truth here about living for the king, expanding the eternal kingdom of God on earth here, expanding the kingdom of God in ourselves and on this planet earth to the nations Lord reveal to all of us our gifts and talents and calling how we can get involved in expanding the kingdom of God in this society in this nation and many nations around the world Lord use us Lord we don't want to waste our life away we don't want to stand before you on the day of judgment and you say, wow, you bury all the gifts and talent under the ground. You don't use what you have for the kingdom. Lord, we don't want to be that unfaithful servant. We want to be faithful. We will use everything that we have for the sake of the name of Jesus Christ and for his kingdom, Lord. Lord, help us to show this lifestyle to our children that they will live for the kingdom as well. And we believe and declare why we are living for the kingdom, expanding the kingdom through evangelism and discipleship. You shall meet all of our needs. You shall, Lord, perform miracles. You say in the book of Numbers, Lord, you shall heal those who served you and bless the family. I believe your promise shall be fulfilled. We serve you, and you shall take care of our family. And you shall also, Lord, heal the sickness in our life. We're going to live a long life to serve you. Not just long life, but we will be strong. No knee pains. 
no back pain, no dementia, no visual problem. We can see clear when we turn 80, 90 years old. We can travel. We can do things because you take care of our body, as we take care of your kingdom, Lord. We thank you, Father. We declare in Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How many people say I give my life to God? I'm gonna live for the kingdom. Amen. I hope you respond to this preaching. It's in the Bible. Psalm 119, 98-99 Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. I believe that the word of God that you listen in this teaching will really make you wiser and more fruitful, and you shall meditate on God's word day and night, and you will put it into practice. We are so proud of you that you are hungry and thirsty for the things of God. May the Lord bless you. God poured His fire on the day of Pentecost. And he still opened heaven to pour out his fire in our generation. May the fire of the Lord burn on the inside of you. Brings revival into your life. Send you out to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. May He use you to be a carrier of the fire of revival. May the Lord anoint you. May the fire of God burn every day on the inside of you. And the Lord will be glorified through you. May the grace of God work in your life. And you become fruitful, and you will have many rewards in heaven. May the Lord get the glory through your life. 